Good morning, folks. Uh, let us be in an attitude of prayer. Dear Father, we come before you today in the name of Jesus. We pray for this service today. We pray for each one that has special concerns. Dear Lord, may they be laid on the altar. May you take that burden on to care for those ones that we have such feelings for, or even the ones, dear Lord, that we don't even know that are lifted up in prayer. Bless the service. May the Holy Spirit come to be with us. And dear Lord, may we learn more about our calling and draw closer to you. In your holy name we ask this, and your church says, Amen. Good morning, and welcome to Bell Chapel, United Methodist Church. Um, at this time, I'd like to ask if anyone has any announcements. Delbert? Yeah. Um, I'll just pick up the kids out there. Are you ready to sign up for the Long Water Banquet? This will be so, so real this year. So it's not that. But we're going to have the wonderful job of coming to sing. So the men's going to have a meeting. Thanks, Delbert. Anyone else have any announcements? Okay. Um, Sunday to Sunday, um, we're at our service today, Tuesday, uh, April 27th. The Psalms Bible study uh, continues at, here in the Fellowship Hall from 10 to 1130 with Pastor Diane. And next Sunday, May 2nd, um, is our worship service again at 10 o'clock. Okay, we still need um, your current information. If there's a form inside your bulletin, thank you. There's a form inside your bulletin. Uh, please fill it out if you haven't already done so and put it in the basket at the Welcome Center desk so that Cindy can get every you know one's up information updated, especially your phone numbers. Um, okay, due to the pandemic, like Delbert said, they won't be serving a dinner this year for the All Daughters Banquet, but they will be having um, song and fellowship with Tammy Spicer in the sanctuary here um, on May 8th at 7 o'clock. Roses will be given out after the program, and please RSVP by May 2nd at the, by signing up at the Welcome Center desk on the uh, sheet that's out there. Uh, or you can call the church office and let Cindy know. We will be practicing social distancing and wearing masks in accordance with the CDC guidelines, and we hope to see you there. Uh, May 1st and May 8th, both Saturdays, um, we will be having work days to clean up the front of the church, and if anyone is able to come out and help with that, <clears throat> Um, it starts at 8.30 in the morning, and they appreciate any help that they can get. As graduation is approaching, we at Bell Chapel Church would like to share in this time with you. We are asking you to please bring into the church office a graduation picture and a write-up about yourself, where you are graduating from, 
parents, hobbies, accomplishments, future plans, etc. You can also email them to cindy at bellchapel.org. Please have them in the office by May 14th so we can include them in our June-July newsletter. Okay, please join me in the call to worship. Please stand. The saying is sure, if we have died with him, if we endure, if we deny him, if we are faithless, for he cannot deny himself. In our invocation, God of loving care, in the frailty of our lives, we come to you bringing our troubles and our sorrows. We need your healing touch, but we are afraid to reach out. We are afraid of what your presence might mean to our lives, of the changes it might bring. We worry too, O oh God, that we might not be worthy to receive your blessing. Give us minds of courage to seek you and hearts of faith to know that your love is assured. May the grace you have promised sustain us that the fulfillment of your healing might make us truly whole. Amen. Okay. Where's the volume? Oh. Now, this song says on there, it's got Ben Furby's name up. I'm not going to do it by myself. <laughs> Carol's going to help us lead. Bill's going to help us lead. And I'm going to be in the background. Anyway, this old song here is an old song. Hank Williams Sr. wrote this song many, many years ago. And in my heart, it hits me somewhere down here. It reminds me of what I, where I was at at one time. So whether it does you or not, I don't know. But we get into this thing. Let's, let's raise our hands and start clapping a little bit and have a good time. What do you say? Amen. Here we, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Amen, brother. Praise the, Lord. Praise the Lord. I don't know where we're at. I didn't have my. <laughs> I think we're at children's time. Okay, we are at children's time. Would the children come forward, please?
Okay. <coughs> All Thank you, Jenny, for using your gift. You know, uh, my wife was the custodian at the Richmond United Methodist Church for 20-some years, and uh, Pastor Jack Clouston used to tell her she was using her gifts, that those are gifts for the Lord. And I, I want you to think about something like that. Uh, the gifts that you use for the Lord, and uh, I thank you, Jenny. Before I told you, you can take this pulpit anytime you want to. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The Lord has given you a wonderful gift with children. And uh, let's remember to use our gifts for the Lord, those ones that he has given us. Now it's time for joys and concerns. Does anybody have any joys to share at this moment? Yes. Yes. Isn't it wonderful to have joys? We need to lift our joys up the same as we lift up our prayers because we're giving thanks to God for that. And now then, let us go to our concerns. I do have at the present time uh, uh, two concer uh, three concerns. First of all, uh, uh, I have two special concerns. I can't say anything about those, but they've been weighing heavy on me at this time. And... Uh, uh, people that need help. Also, uh, there is a Charles. Uh, uh, he it was online last night. Uh, he has esophagus cancer and also has spots on his lung. That is fourth stage. So we need to remember Charles in our prayers today. And then for you, dear friends, does anybody have any concerns? Yes. For your mother? There we go. Yes. Okay. Now, I missed that last one. My mom and dad are in Las Vegas. Oh, okay. Travel mercies. Yes. Yes. Uh, I, w I want to mention, add a little bit to that. Uh, lay speakers are trained also. So we will be having a lot more lay speakers in our churches. And there is a reason for that. The churches cannot keep up financially enough to provide for a family. So a lot of people, instead of choosing to go into ministry, they are choosing to go in to something else where they can make three to four times more. So uh, it is important to understand exactly why. We are not getting the replacements we used to get. And uh, when a church is able to have a full-time pastor come in to replace another one, we need to praise God and thank God a whole lot for that. 
because not everybody is as fortunate as us. And those churches that are smaller will receive an awful lot of lay speakers. And again, who go to lay speaker school and they're trained. And many of us pastors have come that route from lay speaking to a, a pastor, a local pastor, and right on through the process. Yes. Another birthday. Yeah, because if you weren't having them. <laughs> yes, and Glenn is going to have a procedure on his uh, arteries in his legs for the circulation. Any others? Yes. Oop, I missed one back here. Yes, Jane. Yes, and I praise God I remembered my hearing aid today. <laughs> yes. Concerns? Yes. What's that? Avella, okay. Okay, travel mercies. A lot of people at this time of the year starting to travel. Yes. Yes. By the way, that bridge movement is going to be televised on TV uh, for two days. They will be showing that, on, I, I believe, on, I don't know if it's on, uh, eight on uh, Fox 8 or if it's on regular uh, WTOV 9, if you want to follow it. Yes. Oh, what's her name? Kathy. Kathy. Kathy Burney fell and broke her leg. That is Doug Burney's uh, wife. Any others? How about unspoken requests at this time? Yes. Marsha Gibson, you need to remember her in prayer. If, if you do remember, uh, she's been going through a lot of problems because uh, her kidneys are not working. Uh, they have found that her sister is now a match. And if they can get Marsha's health back to where it needs to be before surgery, then they'll fly her sister in and she will be giving her a kidney. Uh, dear friends, uh, please bring your prayer concerns to the forefront of your mind and let us be in an attitude of prayer. Dear Lord, at this time we lift up Charles. We lift up special concerns by each and every person. For mothers, dear Lord, we're drawing close to Mother's Day. And let us remember mothers in each and every prayer. Dear Lord, we, we pray for traveling mercies. We pray for Robin. We pray for the church and the schools. Dear Lord, we pray for this situation with needing more pastors, more people to stop forward, step up and take their gifts and use them for the Lord. 
We pray for Glenn and his leg surgery. We pray, dear Lord, for our spouses, and especially for those ones, dear Lord, that are having health issues, hearing issues, dear Lord, for each and every one. For Avella, we pray for the movement of this bridge that people will be safe as it is done. Pray for Kathy, dear Lord. We pray for Marcia Gibson, one dear Lord of our church who, who, dear Lord, you know, has been so faithful to you for so long. May her health come back to a normalcy with a transplant of a kidney. In your holy name, we ask all of these things, and now we close with the prayer that you taught us to pray, dear Lord. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, friends, we're going to uh, receive our offerings. Uh, those are given in the back of the church. If uh, you did not know about that, uh, they will be placed up front. And at the close of the service, if you wanted to drop something in, you can. Uh, so the mission cans are for the children's ministry today. Uh, let us please then give praise for the gifts. <laughs> Thank you, church, for your giving. This is for the Lord's work. May we use it in a way that is pleasing to the Lord. May it go to the building of the kingdom to come, and that is being built now. And may, dear Lord, we honor you in each and every day with our doings. In your holy name, we say, amen. You know, I, I, I'm still of the old uh, style, so I uh, have to excuse me. I skipped over our prayer of dedication, but I don't want to miss a prayer. So would you please join with me? Uh, help us to be generous givers, dear Lord, both of our money and our lives, that we might make a difference in this town. We ask this through your Son our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave all that he was that we might know life in all its fullness. Amen. Um, we have three scripture readings this morning. Uh, Job 1, 20 through 22. At this, Job got up and tore his robe and shaved his head. Then he fell to the ground in worship and said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I will depart. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. In all this, Job did not sin by charging God with wrongdoing. Job 2, 9. His wife said to him, are you still maintaining your integrity? Curse God and die. 1 Corinthians 3, 10 through 11. By the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as a wise builder, and someone else is building on it. But each one should build with care, for no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ.
And that, my friends, is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Are you anchored? Guess what's up here today? I might know a little bit about these kind of things. You know how much I love fishing. It's very dear to my heart also. God is always first in our heart, right? And then there's second place. And that's sort of a race between my wife and fishing. <laughs> Walk softly, Bill. Well, the only reason I say that is because she'll get up in the morning. I'm usually up a little bit before her. She'll come out, she'll look at the sun and say, it's a beautiful day, why don't you go fishing? How am I supposed to take that? We like to have a little bit of fun in church too, don't we? Anchors. I want to think of, I want you to think about your anchor as we go through the sermon today. I would like you to remember your call to serve the Lord. Because when you accepted Jesus Christ into your life, you accepted responsibility also. The responsibility of using the gifts that the Lord Jesus Christ, that the Father in heaven, that the Holy Spirit gave you, lead you to, and point you to in your life. One of the things that this church is being pointed to presently is a new appointment of a pastor. On the welcoming desk in the back, we do have brochures of the pastor and his wife. That brochure also talks about his view of ministry and also his faith journey. When I got the copy uh, immediately after the SPRC had met with him, uh, the old saying, I was blown away by what I read in that little brochure. I think it will be warming to your heart. And let us uh, go on to the sermon then. You heard the scriptures read. Are you anchored? W I want you to know we're not going to sacrifice who we are no matter what the secular world says. No matter how they try to drive us away. But friends, as Christians, we need to stand up a little bit more. We need to fight. I'll get in trouble because I said fight, I suppose. But we need to fight for what God wants us to do and to say. We do not need to be hushed. Let's call our sermon today a continuing series from last Sunday. Last Sunday, I talked to you about what we have to be to have the name Christ, Christian. We took Christ's name, Christian. What we have to believe, what we have to honor to carry that name with us. Some of what we must believe to be called Christian is also to honor other people. To honor them as people that walk this earth that God has sent us to. And as a Christian, you'll see in Pastor Ryan's little flyer, once you accept Christ into your life, you are in ministry. And we need to realize that, and we need to preach the word of God to the people that we're around. And each one of us will do it in a different way. We'll do it in love, uh, loving ways. We'll do it in kindness. We'll do it in really telling them what our faith story is and how we walk with the Lord. Last Sunday, I gave you my personal walk. And I anchored that in Jeremiah 1.5. 
He knew you before he placed you in the womb. That's how much this God loves you. He knew you before that. And he wants to see you grow and live and be a wonderful person. In his name, praise God. Amen. The walk you walk might be different than somebody else's. It might be completely opposite of somebody else's walk because they may not be walking with God. And I want to touch on that kind of thing today. Today I want you to think of your walk, your personal walk as we go through the scripture. Is it anchored in that scripture? If your personal walk is not anchored in the scripture, my friends, you might assume the title Christian, but you're not. It has to be anchored, and anchored strongly. Let me tell you a little bit about ordination just to start out, so you'll know what a the Methodist tradition is. It doesn't matter whether you're an associate member, deacon as I am, or whether you're an elder as Pastor Diane is. You have to have a minimum of seven years schooling. For myself, two years associate degree from West Virginia Northern in the social sciences and world cultures. I was so happy. I was going to be a school teacher. And then I felt the love of God and the calling of God on my heart again. After 20 years, I had turned away and didn't listen. And then instead of being a school teacher and a football coach, that's what I wanted to be. The Lord turned that around on me. Well, not a whole lot. He made me a teacher, didn't he? I hope you can think of me as your coach, too. The Lord walks us down a path, and sometimes we do not know where he's going to lead us to. But in the Methodist tradition, when we go through the ordination process, there's immense amount of people that were going through it. The year that I went through, there were 15 people from all the different districts that entered in the ordination process. It is very hard to get through. All the years you have in schooling, all the interviews that you have, all the hard work that you have as you walk along, all the tutoring, all of the help by a mentor, everything that you do is geared for that ordination process. The number one thing when you take your papers and you write your papers, and some of those papers are 200 typewritten words, 200 pages of typewritten words. And the number one thing that they get whenever you tell them your view of ministry and especially your theology, they want you to anchor it in the scriptures. There we go again. The anchor. There always has to be an anchor as we walk through that. All of the calling, all of the walk, all of the guidance, the interviews, and your theological, biblically anchored walk with the Lord in theology. That's among many other bridges. We talked about a bridge being moved. That's many uh, other bridges ordination that you have to walk through. Notice, though, they must always be biblically anchored. Friends, that's nothing new for a Christian. Your walk needs to be biblically anchored. Let us look at one of the stronger anchors of a person in the scripture, and that's Job. I'm going to turn to Job 1. Verses 13 through 19, just to refresh you with the idea of what Job went through in his walk with the Lord. One day, Job's, uh, one day Job's sons and daughters were feasting and drinking wine at the older brother's house. A messenger came to Job and said, 
the ox were plowing and the donkeys were grazing. And the Sabians attacked and carried them off. They put the servants to the sword and I am the only one that escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another messenger came and said, The fire of God from, fell from the sky and burned up the sheep and the servants. And I am the only one that has escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another messenger came and said, The Chaldeans formed three raiding parties and swept down on your camels and carried them off. They put the servants to the sword, and I am the only one that escaped to tell you. When he was still speaking, yet another messenger came and said, Your sons and daughters were feasting. Your sons and daughters were feasting and drinking wine at the oldest brother's house when suddenly a mighty wind swept in from the desert and struck the four corners of the house. It collapsed on them, and they are dead, and I am the only one that escaped to tell you. At this, Job got up and tore his robe and shaved his head. Then he fell to the ground in worship and said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I will depart. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of the scripture. Dear friends, Karen and I were talking about this last night. I wonder how many Christians could withstand that much loss in their life. Everything that you love, everything on this earth that you love, is taken away from you. And still, Job turned to the will of God. May the will of God be honored. Oh Lord, we don't know if we could withstand that or not, but I pray our faith in you is strong enough. Friends, you need an anchor. You need an anchor that is strong. Can you withstand the tempest of life. I want you to look at the pictures this morning. Look at that tempest up there. The rocks are close. The boat's going to be torn apart on the rocks. Who could ever forget the challenger? Do you remember mom and dad standing there? I believe they were the mom and dad of the school teacher that was on the ship when it blasted off and they were so happy and all of a sudden when you saw those two rockets separating the explosion, can you imagine what it was like for them? The tempest of life. I know you've gone through tempests before. We all have. We walk through them time and time again. Look at the beautiful faces of them and they were lost in one explosion trying to explore God's creation. And I mean all of his creation. I don't care if there's one universe or a hundred universes or whatever the, they tell us. It's God's creation. The pandemic. Oh, we're all connected to the pandemic, aren't we? We're so tired of masks. Poor high school girl collapsed when she crossed the finish line. Before she got to it, she fell across it because she was short of oxygen, running 800 meters. But look at how many lives we lost. Gettysburg, a field of death, not that far away from where we sit today. But draw back your focus to the center picture are you anchored in the rock? I want to tell you about anchoring in a boat. I throw out an anchor in some places and wind blows me anyway. That's because my anchor isn't strong enough. That anchor has to cling to something. Whether it's another old shipwreck or whether it's rocks that it grabs a hold of. The way I got that anchor, I got to tell you, 
Maybe some of you know the name. A gentleman that loved fishing. His name was Eddie Weaver. He didn't live that far from here, not too far from Hilltop Presbyterian Church. And Eddie was one of my parishioners. We never went fishing. We talked about it all the time. On my graduation, Ed said, we're planning a fishing trip. We planned it. We were going to go to Real Foot Lake down in Kentucky, and I believe maybe part of it in Tennessee. At the gradual, I mean, at the ret retirement party, he brought this in. We nobody could understand why he carried an anchor in. And then he got up and made a little speech. I was emotional that day anyway. It brought me to tears. He said, Bill, I brought you an anchor. Every time you lay your eyes on that anchor, I want you to remember to stay anchored in the Lord because there's going to be a lot of wind blowing against you. There always is when you're a pastor in ministry or whether you're a Christian in ministry. doesn't matter. The wind's going to blow against you. And I cherish that anchor. <laughs> I have never put it on a boat and thrown it out. I'm afraid I'll lose it. I want to keep it so that I can look at it sometimes and know exactly what he was talking about. Are you anchored like Job? Can you have your enemies, your friends, your relatives, can you have them and love them? Whether they are wherever they are in their life. Can you love them? Can you reach out to them? Can you make them feel loved? And can you still stay anchored no matter what they do? Now let us take a look at one of the worst sinners ever in the Bible. Who am I talking about? Well, the first one you'd think of, Satan, but I'm talking about somebody that walked this earth. I'm talking about a wonderful person, too. I'm talking about Paul. You know Saul, who's Jesus called Paul? We need to know that few will enter the kingdom of heaven, and Paul finally saw that one day. There was something special about him seeing it. But let me read a little bit about Paul. First of all, he was the tool of condemnation. Condemnation. Satan's work. That's what Paul was. Listen from Acts 26, 9-11. Indeed, I myself thought I must do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth. This I also did in Jerusalem, and many of the saints I shut up in prison, having received authority from the chief priest. And when they were put to death, I cast my vote against them. And I punished them often in every synagogue and compelled them to blasphemy. And being exceedingly enraged against them, I persecuted them, even to foreign cities. The worst of the worst is Paul, condemning people to death, helping drag them to be killed. Satan's worker, killing Christians. But what happened to Paul? He went from a demon, a demon of Satan's, he went to a saint for Jesus Christ. Praise God. Amen. He became Christ witness, Christ worker. It was an encounter with Christ. Paul was saved, sanctified, set aside for the work of Christ, and he practiced self-denial. What was that last week? That's a baptism of the Holy Spirit, isn't it? He accepted Jesus Christ into his life. He was saved, sanctified, set aside for the work of Christ. 
and he practiced self-denial, and he did the work of Christ. Amen? He was one of those ones that continually did the work, no matter what was going to happen to him. Paul found what? He found his anchor. He found his anchor in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. How did he find it? He found it on the road to Damascus. Listen from Acts 26, starting at verse 12. One of these journeys, I was going to Damascus with the authority and commission of the chief priest. About noon, O king, as I was on the road, I saw a light from heaven brighter than the sun blazing around me and my companions. Glenn? Carol, we sang about that this morning, didn't we? Guess what? Paul saw the light. He saw it very brightly. Brighter than the sun blazing around him. We all fell to the ground, and I heard a voice saying to me in Arabic, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? It is hard for you to kick against the God. What is that? That's a prod for cattle. He's talking about a long stick that was sharpened in those days, and you jam the cattle with it or the sheep or whatever to get them to go in the direction you wanted to. It's hard to kick against it because you'll hurt yourself. Then I ask, says Paul, who are you, Lord? I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, the Lord replied. Now get up and stand on your feet. I have appeared to you to appoint you as a servant and as a witness of what you have seen of me and what I will show you. I will rescue you. Do any of you feel like you need to be rescued today? Do you remember when you were rescued? As a Christian, have you slipped a little bit? We all do at times. But have you clung closer to the anchor? Have you pulled yourself strong to the anchor when you feel that slip coming? I will show you. I will rescue you from your own people, from the Gentiles. It was being turned around on Paul. He was going to be persecuted, and he's pleading his case before the king. I am sending you, says the Lord, I am sending you to them to open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light. And from the power of Satan to God, so that they may receive forgiveness of sin and a place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. There we go again, back to that word sanctified. Saved in Jesus Christ, sanctified by the faith that you have in him, set apart for his work. Boy, if you've ever read the Bible, you know how Paul was set apart after he come from the worst of the worst to the best of the best and went forward as a saint for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The anchor that holds is Christ. Paul preaches Christ and he preaches Christ crucified. He talks about the blood. He's not afraid to. I know a preacher that told me one time, I can't preach about the blood, it's too gory. Praise God for the cleansing blood of Jesus Christ as he hung on that cross. I go back to the scripture once again. Paul says, I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another so that there may be no division among you, 
and that you may be perfectly united in mind and thought. My brothers, some from Chloe's household, have informed me that there are quarrels among you. What I mean is this. One of you says, I follow Paul. Another, I follow Apollos. Another, I follow Cephas. And still another, I follow Christ. Christ is the anchor. Paul says, is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Were you baptized in the name of Paul? Of course not. You were baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. It's not about Paul. It's about Christ. It's not about me, as we talked last Sunday. It's about Jesus. It's not about you. It's about Jesus. That's what we're here for. Paul has anchored my friends in Christ. And you must be also anchored in Christ. Are you anchored in Jesus, the solid rock? I'm done, friends. I feel like I just run 100 yards. I do know one thing. I love my Jesus, and so do you. And when you get on that slippery slope, cast your eyes to Jesus and throw out the anchor because he's the only solid rock you've got in your life that you'll always be able to depend on. Let us pray. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you so much. We talk about the sacrifice of Jesus. I can't imagine what the sacrifice was for you to watch your son go through the journey that you sent him on. To watch your son say if there's any way this cup can be taken from me, but not my will, your will. Our Father in heaven, may we be able to say those same things when it comes to a hard point in our life. Not our will, but your will be done. If this is your will, then let it be done. If there's another road that I need to walk down, Lord, point me down it through the Holy Spirit and let me walk to Jesus in that way. But friends, stay on the path to Jesus. Sometimes it's so easy to do. And other times you need an anchor to hold you. But hold true to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In your holy name, dear Father in heaven, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you for your life. Dear Holy Spirit, travel with us today and through the days to come to keep us pointed to Jesus. In your holy name, we say, Amen. I just want to tell you that the, the, as I practiced it, the lyrics became very meaningful, especially for what, you know, the times that we live in today. So um, I hope that uh, as we sing the song, the, the lyrics will mean something to you as well. <coughs> so please stand and join me in times like these. And also, yeah, the um, lyrics in your pews.
Please join with me in the benediction. This service is ended, but our life in Jesus Christ goes on and on. We go now in his name into all the world. May our light so shine and our joy be so obvious that all who see us may come to praise God. Please join with me to sing God Hold to the anchor, friends.